six years, people have called Fortnite a dead game. The game is dead. Fortnite is dead. Is Fortnite dying? I hate this game right now. A lot of people are just losing interest in Fortnite. Yet November 2023 was the biggest month in Fortnite history, amassing over 100 million unique players. To figure out how this happened, we need to first understand what it is that made Fortnite such a success to start with. When Fortnite Battle Royale released in 2017, it was a super fun, casual game that merged the trendy Battle Royale genre with Save the World's incredibly unique building mechanics. Building was initially designed to provide protection against Save the World's hordes, walls to slow them down, ramps to elevate yourself up, floors to give yourself a place to walk on, and cones to... I don't really know what cones did in Save the World, to be honest. The editing mechanic allowed you to change the shape of your builds, which initially was used much more for cosmetic effect rather than to give you an actual gameplay advantage. These mechanics translated over to Fortnite Battle Royale incredibly well. In other Battle Royale games, it can be frustrating if a zone pulls far away from you and you're forced into the open as you're left vulnerable. If this happens in Fortnite, you can still build to protect yourself, allowing you to make safer rotations, and you're not forced to head towards that one building in the safe circle. But the building mechanic was so extraordinary when used in fights against other players. It was clear from the start how many insane outplays were possible, which made Fortnite so much more unique than any other shooter game. Almost every player remembers their first victory royale. <laughs> People were just posting on every social media platform they could at the time. There was just something so addictive in grinding for that first win, playing out dozens of matches finally just to pick up a victory royale. The fact that the game was free, combined with the incredibly unique building mechanics and the addictive victory royale format, propelled Fortnite to become a cultural phenomenon with millions of daily players. The beauty of early chapter 1 was basically that everyone sucked. Even the people you remember as being such fast builders would get absolutely floored by your average pub player from today. Epic Games had accidentally created one of the highest skill gaps in all of gaming, which as players would start to improve, would slowly start to become a massive problem. In the Fortnite Season 3 update, the building mechanics were changed forever. Turbo building was added to the game, which allowed players to hold down their build button instead of clicking to place each build piece. This rapidly accelerated how fast players could build, but also caused a major issue that Epic Games would spend the rest of the chapter trying to resolve, boxing up. Up until this point, most fights had been build fights, where players would aggressively try to crank higher than the other player to give themselves the best angles to hit massive damage shots onto the other player. The introduction of turbo building changed this entirely. Defensively boxing up quickly became a close to uncounterable strategy. Players could just sit inside a box and hold their wall, and there was little the other player on the other side could do. The average player was about a year away from figuring out how to replace a wall, so many players became increasingly frustrated with Fortnite's fighting mechanics. This skill gap would widen even faster in the next season with the addition of the playground playlist. Here, players could drop into their own private island and practice building and editing. Your average casual player wasn't grinding build fights in the playground mode, but the ones who were improved rapidly. Epic Games is a smart company, despite what you may think. Seeing a large percentage of their player base unhappy wasn't good for business, so over the next few seasons they'd make many changes to try and fix this issue. Along with the wide variety of explosives added to destroy players boxed up, explosives were changed to deal 25% damage through builds. Due to backlash from the community, this was reverted the next day because it made fighting incredibly frustrating. The boombox was added in Season 7, which created sound waves that destroyed any structure in a futile radius for 18 seconds. The heavy sniper was added, which with one bullet would instantly destroy any build piece, and many, many more polarizing items were added to the game. Epic Games even tried adjusting the turbo build time from a build placing every 0.05 seconds to 0.15 seconds, creating a constant delay before each build was placed. This would allow players spraying a boxed opponent to get one or two builds through the wall each time it was broken, weakening the strength of defensive play. If you want to try how this feels, just switch region to one where you get 100 ping more than you currently do. The game felt horrible, and unsurprisingly, this change was reverted within a few hours. Chapter 1 was just a constant repeating cycle. A broken item gets added, the skilled players complain, the item gets nerfed or removed, and then the casual player base complains. It was kind of a lose-lose situation that really continually built up to its peak. The mechs. Defensively, boxing up didn't matter. In fact, I mean, building didn't matter for the majority of season eggs. Finally, both casual and competitive players were in agreement. These were just too broken, and the game was not fun to play. Getting mech! Is the mech's torping in! He's torping it in! Kill two! Kill two! The mech is on high ground! Oh, oh shit! Oh, oh, oh. Oh, the man!
This was the first time where Fortnite was really classified as a dead game. People just felt worn down by the consistent frustrating metas. At the end of the chapter, the Black Hole event pushed this narrative even further. With the game being offline for three days, schoolyard rumors spread that the game would never return, with Elon Musk buying Fortnite and deleting it. As you may be able to guess, most people referring to Fortnite as a dead game at this time were just memeing, but they were about to get much more serious. With the release of Fortnite Chapter 2, the game felt fresh and new, which invigorated many players' interest in the game. However, with lockdowns happening early into the chapter, players had more time to practice than ever. Like the introduction of the playground mode early in Chapter 1, this led to the average player's skill to increase rapidly, furthering the already large skill gap in the game. Many casuals and even long-standing professional players quit at this time from a combination of not enjoying the game and falling behind the skill level. Chapter 2 was 8 seasons long, lasting around 2 years. It was a good chapter, but it just felt repetitive. A lot of players felt burnt out and moved on to other games. Competitive players also felt less motivated to play. Their prize pool had slowly been declining over the last few years. 2019 had a $30 million World Cup, but 2020 and 2021 had no major LAN events. This combination led to a lot of players just losing interest in competing. The combination of the massive skill gap between casual and competitive players, the long repetitive chapter, and the declining state of competitive Fortnite led a huge number of players to quit the game. The term dead game was was now heavily associated with Fortnite's image. The stigma of being labelled a dead game has kept players away from playing Fortnite for years, but Epic Games actually had the perfect solution. Fortnite OG. Now, Fortnite OG took us back to the original Chapter 1 map, a time before Fortnite had the reputation of being dead. Many players who thought Fortnite was boring and unenjoyable returned to the game and loved it. The average player count went from 1.5 million players to over 3 million. Each weekend peaked to over 5 million concurrent players, with the end of season event having 11.6 million players online all at the same time. November 2023 had over 100 million players, a lifetime record for Fortnite. With Fortnite moving to Chapter 5 on a brand new map with entirely different mechanics, the average player count for the most part has stayed the same. The players who returned to the game for Fortnite OG have continued to play. The nostalgia brought a huge amount of them back to the game, but the gameplay is what's keeping them playing. This may be shocking to hear, but Fortnite has actually been a really great game all of this time. The three main elements that gave Fortnite its dead reputation are, for the most part, long gone. The massive skill gap in the game has, for the most part, kind of just figured itself out. As time has gone on, the average player is significantly more skilled and knowledgeable about building and editing. Defensively boxing up is still a very strong strategy, but now the average player knows how to replace walls and take safer peaks. This can still be very intimidating for new players, but now there are bots in public matches, a zero build mode where players of any level can jump in and play, an entire host of creative maps that players can play and practice the building mechanics, and a ranked mode where most of the best players are. The casual players can, for the most part, sit back and enjoy playing Fortnite without having to worry about the sweats that much. On the flip side, the competitive community has also slowly been developing over the years. There's still a lot of issues in Fortnite tournaments, don't get me wrong, but participation is higher than ever. I actually think the ranked mode released earlier in the year has been a big contributor to this. Despite it not being the most competitive mode, many low to mid-level players are excited by the idea of ranking up and grinding it. One look at the r slash Fortnite competitive subreddit will tell you that. Over the last year, the massive surge in players in the ranked playlists have been a gateway for these players to get into competitive Fortnite. Even though the tournament prizing is currently at an all-time low, tournament participation has continued to rise over the last few years with solo cash cups now repeatedly having over 100,000 players. But most importantly for the competitive players, there's consistency in tournaments. On the surface, the reduction of tournament prize pool from 2019 was a sign that Epic Games weren't interested in competitive Fortnite. But the reality was that giving away $100 million a year in tournament prizing is a pretty horrible business strategy. It seems like Epic Games have slowly slowly lowered the prize pools over the years to find a yearly total that is sustainable, yet still gives away enough money to get new and existing players interested in competing. Competitive Fortnite is no longer a get-rich-quick scheme, but now it's a much more stable competitive community which keeps players coming back season after season, and I don't see a reason why this won't continue for years and years to come. The pipeline of making the game fun for new players and then transitioning a percentage of them into competitive players ultimately leads to a community that will play Fortnite for years at a time. 
Look at any game that's been successful for over 10 years, and a central theme of nearly all of them is a strong competitive scene. Players who play for longer spend more money, and the players who play for the longest amount of time are usually competitive players. And finally, staleness. The first two chapters were over two years long each, but since then, chapter three and chapter four have only lasted one year, which has kept things much more fresh. Epic Games seemed heavily committed to expanding Fortnite into much more than just a battle royale, however. The newly released LEGO Fortnite is a completely different game mode that on release has over 1 million concurrent players, and this was just a Thursday morning. They're adding a racing mode, a Guitar Hero knockoff mode, and I'm sure many, many other different games in the future. The implementation of UEFN means the number and range of new experience to play are rapidly expanding. Players are no longer stuck to just playing 1v1 or Zone Wars maps, they can play Skibbity Toilet Free For All or a good map. With new tools continually being implemented into UEFN, the quality of these maps are ever increasing. It seems like Epic Games are truly committed into turning Fortnite into the multiverse, and I think Levin 2K says it best. There's certain men in our community who don't do anything and they'll complain and say Fortnite's dead. Fortnite's not dead. You are dead. You are 